Hello, we're back again, and this is the, the professor, this is Daniel Fritz Mathematics, and now we're back to discussing the instantaneous rate of change using the difference quotient to, to find the derivative, which is also known as the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change and the derivative. Of course, uh, we discussed how uh, the different quotients work graphically uh, in class, and uh, also, too, we want to now, of course, simple functions that we did in the last video, now we have a fraction, which is very, very difficult. Of course, there's a lot of different uh, derivative techniques, but here we're using the difference quotient, which is a little bit more challenging for some students. So we want everybody all over the world to see how the five steps of the difference quotient is going to be applied. So I want to first start off with what? f of x. So f of x, what is f of x? So we're taking x and we're plugging it in or substituting in to where the function is for x. So we get the same thing called 1 over what? 1 over x. Now our second step is going to be f of x plus h. Where we take x plus h and plug it in or substitute it in for x into the function. So that will be 1 over x plus h. Now, look at that. Seems like, oh, we got part of the problem done, and we do. We got the first two steps, f of x, f of x plus h. Our next step is f of x plus h minus f of x. So in this case, we're talking about 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. Now we're not done with this. This is a lot of stuff uh, where it's, or times where students really struggle with uh, the use of uh, complex fractions or you know fractions that are with the use of variables and things and the like. So if we look, let's watch this. I'm gonna stack this like we used to do a long time ago. One over h. 1 over, uh, 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. We asking ourselves the question, we must subtract this, so we must find the common denominator. This is subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, so we have to find the common denominator. So if you remember a long time ago, we had something like 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5, what was the common denominator? We just simply did what? We said 3 times 5, which is 15, which gave us our LCD. Well, it's almost the same thing in this particular case, where you're taking this and you're multiplying this together. You're taking this term, uh, this uh, expression, and multiplying with that expression. A lot of times, I take students, I tell students to say use 3 times 5 and also use 3 times 5. Well, you can say this divided by this or 3 goes into this, right? Or, you know, is this divided by this, 3 times 5 divided by 3, right? Or 3 times 5 divided by 5. Or you can say that 3 goes into 3 times 5 and, three, and 5 goes into 3 times 5. So basically, you see what's common here. So if I got 3 times 5 over 3, this cancels out, so I'm left with 5, so I'm going to multiply the 5 here with the numerator, which is renaming the fraction. That is explanatory. I like to explain it this way because students struggle when they find x's and y's and h's and o's and things like that. So we see that x times x plus h, and we see that x times x plus h is the common denominator. So this is a good way of looking at this. So how do we find, or how can we find, how do we divide this into this? Oh, we can take it off to the side and say x plus h divided by x, uh, x times x plus h divided by x plus h, just like we did over here. And we just, what, cancel that out. And then we're left with what? Whatever's common cancels out, of course. And then what are we left with? We're left with the thing that does, is not like the other. Remember Sesame Street? So here, one of these things don't belong with the other, right? Almost, but anyway. 
Uh, if this is it's the same as this, you know when you actually put it as a ratio, that's going to cancel out and you're left with the 5. So same here, you're left with the x. So you're going to multiply x times 1, which is just what? x. See that? Now let's do this again, and we see that x goes into this, or this expression divided by x. So we say x times x plus h divided by x. So look at that. That cancels out. So look what we're left with. We're left with what? x plus h. And we're going to multiply x plus h times negative 1, basically. Right? So this is going to be negative x plus h. Look at that, everyone. So look at what we have here. So we have this expression right here. And now we're getting ready to subtract. Actually do some subtracting. And as we subtract this, let me write, rewrite it this way and say x minus x plus h all over x times x plus what? h. So what do we do next? We actually write this and say x and we distribute the negative sign. This will be negative x minus what? h all over x times x plus what? h. Now, watch. x minus x is going to be 0. We're left with just what? Negative h over what? Negative h over x times x plus h. That's what this is. That's what f of x plus h minus f of x equals what? It equals negative x. No, I'm sorry. Negative h divided by x times x plus h. Now, we did the first step, the second step, the third step in which we got negative h over x times x plus h. Let's go to the fourth step. So the fourth step says f of x plus h minus f of x divided by what? h. So what is that saying? I'm going to take this solution and put it over top of h. So when you're dividing fractions now, remember? So here we have x times x plus h divided by what? h. So look at that. If we rewrite that, if, if everyone out there you have trouble the way it's written, we could just rewrite it this way and say negative h over x times x plus h divided by h over what, folks? h over 1. So what do you do? When you're, multiple, when you're dividing fractions, you're going to change the operation symbol to multiplication, and then you're going to take the reciprocal of the second what? The second, the, the second term here. So this will be 1 over h. Y'all see that? So we said 1 over h. We can change this to multiplication. We said 1 over h. So now we're going to cross cancel. So now that's going to be negative 1 times 1, which is what? Negative 1 over, again, x times x plus h. Does everybody see that? Everybody see that? So that is what, here, let's write this down over again. Negative 1 over x times x plus h. Now, that's what f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h equals to. It equals that. What is our last step? Our last step is to find the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches what? Zero. So here we found the average rate of change. That fourth step is the average rate of change of this function here. That's just f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change by what? By actually what? Plugging in the limit. So we're going to say the limit of 1 over x times x plus h as h approaches 0. So we plug in the limit or substitute the limit in. So x times x plus 0 is going to give you a final result of 1 over x times x which is going to be equal to negative 1 over x squared. So this is your instantaneous rate of change, right? This is your instantaneous rate of change 
which is going to equal to, so the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, as h approaches 0 now, is going to equal to negative 1 over x squared. That is your final answer for this problem.